Game Sack is now on Blu-ray. Game Sack, we've got some games that are excessively violent. Wow, does that hurt your throat? No, it doesn't, but these games are really violent and they went over the top for no reason other than just to be violent. That's right, six very over the top violent games like I said Dragon that! <laughs> All right, well, let's just get right let's into Let's get right it. into these violent ass games. All right, man, just calm down a little bit. Mad World is a beat-em-up developed by Platinum Games and published by Sega for the Wii. In this game, you play the role of Jack Kamen, who is a contestant in a game show called Death Watch. As you'd expect, it's a game of survival, and by winning, you get to keep your life. Not only that, but you get gobs of money, which of course would make it much more enticing to join. I mean, who in their right mind would join a game show about killing and survival if there wasn't cash prizes? Jack is a pretty bad dude, and he can kick all sorts of ass. What's even cooler is that he has a prosthetic arm that doubles as a retractable chainsaw. Hail to the king, baby. Anyway, you control Jack with a nunchuck and Wii remote. He has lots of different moves that he can do and for the most part they're easy to pull off. But he also uses quite a bit of motion controls and while it works fine I would just prefer straight button combinations. Your A button is a straight punch and you can also grab your enemies by holding this button in. If you want to do an uppercut, you don't even have to push the punch button. All you have to do is mimic an uppercut by punching upwards with the remote. It works pretty well. You can also do a reverse punch by swinging the remote sideways. It's really fun to beat people up this way and then using the chainsaw to finish them off. The game tries to get you to do combos, which will earn you a lot more points than normal attacks. And when I say combo, I mean for example, picking up a tire and putting it on somebody's body. Then you take a street sign and ram it through their skull. Then after that, you throw them into spikes. If you do all of this, you get mega points. Mega points are what you want, as you unlock lots of stuff like new weapons, a bloodbath challenge, and when you get to a certain point level, the boss will show himself for you to fight. I like doing these combos, but I feel like that's all I should be doing instead of just punching and chainsawing people in half for small points. I mean, look how cool this move is where you take this guy's beating heart out of his chest. There's no time limit in the game, so I guess you can go for mega points with combos or the low point way with just normal attacks. Throughout each level, there will be bloodbath challenges. These are here for you to kill lots of people and get lots of points. These are generally entertaining and a good way to get enough points for the boss fight. As you can see, the game is not light on violence. In fact, it's one of the more violent games I've ever played. The sheer amount of moves that you can do to kill somebody is pretty high and I wonder if I'll ever see all the death moves that the game has to offer. One thing that I've always found strange about the game is the choice to go black and white. There's a lot of times when you're playing and you're looking for something like a tire to ring your enemy and you just don't see it because it melts into the background because it's all black and white. Then you see all the red blood that spurts out of your enemies. At this point, I realized that the choice for black and white was made to make the blood and violence more intense. It worked for the most part because it really does feel that way. As far as the sound goes, I'm not a big fan of the music at all. It's all rap and to my ears, it just hurts and does nothing for me. <laughs> To me, a heavy metal soundtrack would have been a much better fit than this crap. And not that you would ever play this game in front of your children because of the violence factor, but there is a ton of cussing in here as well. Sometimes I laugh at it, but mostly I feel it's not necessary. All in all, this is a pretty fun game if you don't mind the violence. I don't mind it, so I'd recommend this title as it can be entertaining figuring out the new combos and death moves. The game is super cheap right now. I bought my copy last summer for the outrageous sum of $1.99. I feel I got my money's worth. Yeah. 
This is Manhunt on the original Xbox. It's also on the PlayStation 2 and PC. This was supposedly one of the most violent games back when it was released in 2003. You play as a dude named Cash who was on death row for doing naughty things. But your execution was faked. Now you're apparently the star of a snuff film where you're made to kill people for the camera. Ideally, you sneak up on people and take them out by surprise. That way, they can't fight back. But you can also melee battle if you get spotted. So basically, this is a stealth game more than anything. I've never been good at stealth games and I've never really liked them. Well, except for the original Metal Gear Solid, if that counts. Like a good amount of games from the past 15 years or so, you have someone on the radio who sees everything you do and constantly talks to you. There's a hood upstairs. Make some noise. Hit something. That should get his attention. I can't fault Manhunt here since it's so old, but games these days still love to do this. Anyway, Radio Guy likes you to ambush all of your enemies instead of fighting them so he can get close-up shots for whatever kind of video he's making. He really chastises you if you get spotted. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible not to get spotted. The enemies are generally very alert and it's tough to stay hidden even when you're in the shadows. As the game progresses, you'll be able to collect different weapons. Fortunately, you can carry multiple weapons at a time and switch between them on the fly. You collect painkillers to restore your life and guess who's going to be addicted to them if he survives the game? One thing that really bugs me about this game is the camera. There are two options for controlling it and both of them suck. If you invert it, it inverts the left and right as well, which is just wrong. If you play it so that the left stick controls you and the right stick controls the camera, it's still bad because the left stick won't turn the camera around when you turn around. And if you try to look around with the camera, it goes into a first person view, which is very confusing and disorienting. This is a game that developers need to study so they know exactly what not to do with the camera. The graphics are generally mediocre and unremarkable. The game runs in 480i, which is super weird for an Xbox game. I'd expect this from the lowly PS2, but not the frickin' Xbox. The sound is mostly people talking and your heart thumping, not much more than that. It's supposed to feel intense, but it just makes everything more repetitive. And this game is extremely repetitive. You're not given cool enough weapons early enough in the game to keep your interest up. All you do is find thugs, kill them, go on to the next thug, and then find your way to the next area. It takes forever for the story to even start to pick up. I really don't recommend this one. You can't hide all night. We're gonna find you. So let's check out Technocop on the Genesis instead. This was a very early game on the system by Razorsoft who were always trying to be edgy. You start out driving your sweet sports car down an unnamed road shooting at anyone else who happens to be on their way somewhere. You're a cop and eventually you get notified of wrongdoings in the area. You pull over to take care of the problem. Basically, there are notorious criminals that you need to stop inside of these extremely rundown buildings. When you shoot enemies, they explode and twitch for a while. I guess normal non-exploding bullets just aren't good enough for these guys. Oh, and you can even kill kids! Yep. You lose some score by doing this, but that's it. These buildings are mazes of pits and elevators. Once you find the boss, you can kill or capture him, but usually killing him is your best bet. You can switch between your gun and a net at any time if you want to spare the lives of these dirty criminals. You have a time limit, and if you don't kill the boss criminal in time, they escape. So regardless of if they escape or you get them, it's back out to your car to drive down to the next place. You'll get upgraded items and weapons along the way. But the game doesn't offer much variety from these two areas. This is pretty much it. The control takes some getting used to. Button A jumps and button B fires your gun. I really dislike backwards controls like that. The graphics are extremely basic and could be done on an 8-bit system. There's not much music here outside of the title screen. Graphics and sound were really never Razorsoft's strong point. Now, I can't really recommend that you immediately get up, go out, and try to find a copy of this post-haste, but I did have some fun with this. I mean, hell, I'd rather play it than Manhunt. Here's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. As far as extremely violent video games go, you could just about include any first-person shooter out there. With a few exceptions, the vast majority of the genre is going to have a high amount of violence. 
The one game that comes to mind for me and for a lot of people out there would be Modern Warfare 2. I love this game and it probably has one of the most fun single player campaigns that I've ever played through. You play the role of multiple soldiers throughout the game switching between them after missions are complete. I really liked going back and forth between the different characters and to me this gave the story a lot of depth. In the first mission you're in Afghanistan taking a city back from insurgents. The city looks really good and has tons of detail. There's insurgents all over the place and it feels really good mowing them down with your gun. After that you go to a Russian airbase and kill a bunch of Russians which again was highly enjoyable. The next mission? Well it takes the extreme violence to another level. I mean it's been pretty violent so far and I've killed a lot of people but they were all bad and deserved it so there's no guilt. In this mission you are undercover fighting along an ultra-nationalist Vladimir Makarov. Makarov, you and some of his men commit a huge terrorist attack at a Moscow airport. Right from the start you walk into the turmoil and just start mowing down civilians. They're all running for their lives and you just keep walking and shooting and killing. People are hiding and they're trying to help other people who are wounded but that doesn't stop Makarov and his men from taking everybody's life. As you finally get to the end of the level, Makarov reveals that he knows you are with the CIA and kills you. He leaves your body for the Russians to find which eventually leads them to believe that the USA was behind this massacre. It's interesting because right at the start of this game there's an option to bypass this level if you want to or if you feel it's too disturbing or offensive. Yeah, it's a little disturbing shooting innocent civilians but then I remember that I'm just playing a video game and those feelings don't even remotely match what I feel in real life. Like I said the campaign is great and really is a good time but like all campaigns in the series it lasts for about 5 hours and it's all over. Sure it's fun to play through a couple of times but after that then what? Well of course you have what the majority of the people out there buy these games for and that's online multiplayer. I was sure that by now the servers for this game would have been taken down but wow was I wrong. I also thought that if the servers were up would anyone really still be playing this game? Now granted there's not as many people playing now as there was almost 7 years ago when this game came out but I was able to get on a game with no problem. And it's still fun to play to this day. There's a lot of different game modes out there but my favorite is still in will always be team deathmatch. The violence of course is always there and I always die about as much as I kill but I still have a good time. Of course I'm not going to recommend this game to anyone out there as I feel the majority of our audience doesn't really care for this genre. But if you do like it then you know as well as I do how fun it can be. crap those games are violent. Huh. I want these games banned right now. Our kids are precious and they cannot handle these games. And I'm surprised you haven't gone out and killed somebody right now. Well I want to because I'm getting really pissed <laughs> and these games are causing it. All right well just leave me in your will when you go to jail and somebody kills you all right so I can help all your games. Let's talk about more violent games. Okay. That's, that's the way to do it. You can't talk about excessively violent games without mentioning Mortal Kombat, so let's check out Mortal Kombat X on the Xbox One here. It also came out on the PlayStation 4, PC, and even iOS and Android. I got this one for free when I bought the system, and you know what? I actually love this game. This one lets you select from over 20 characters to start, but you can buy more with real money if you want. And who doesn't love microtransactions? The game has a story mode which I like quite a bit. It takes place long, long after the original Mortal Kombat so everyone's all old and stuff. Fitting I guess. Anyway this mode is basically one super long cutscene. But often there's simple quick time events that you have to deal with and honestly I found them kind of fun. Eventually the cutscene will seamlessly turn into a one on one two round fight. I haven't played through the entire story yet but it seems like most characters have their very own chapter. I really like this as it forces you to try out every character in multiple battles against different enemies. The story itself isn't super engrossing or anything but I often found myself wondering who I was going to fight next and why. It does actually give some depth to most of the characters as well. You can't do the fatality moves here since your opponents need to be alive for the next part of the story but oh well. I think most people will probably ignore this mode but again I like it. But fear not, there are also regular tower modes which offer a lot of the one on one fun without all of the pomp and circumstance. Mortal Kombat is about nothing if not for its excessive violence and this one does not disappoint. 
Even just sparring back and forth looks exceedingly painful and savage. Blood flies with nearly every hit and there are a lot of moves that you can do. I'm enjoying this one a lot more than I have the original games in the series, mainly because I can figure stuff out and pull off moves. I'm still not totally used to using the right trigger to block yet, but I think I'm starting to get it. Using the top left button to throw is already becoming second nature, however. Many stages have items lying around that can be used. Some of these will cause very painful close-ups. Ah. There's also certain moves that you can do during a match which are like fatalities, but they're actually not. You'll often get an x-ray view of what's happening to your opponent's skeleton. Yo, that doesn't feel good. No problem though, as you can still get back up and fight just like you'd expect to. Then of course are the fatalities that the series is known for. These are absolutely crazy. Sometimes they're tough to pull off, but extremely satisfying when you do. If we saw violence like this back in 1991 when the first game was popular, we would not have been able to believe it. Sub-Zero wins. They're all really brutal and pretty damn funny as well. What I'm showing you here is only scratching the surface of all the fatalities that can actually be performed in the game. There's also brutalities which require exact conditions to be met. Honestly, these aren't entertaining enough to be worth it, really. Cool if you do them on accident, though. There are no babalities, animalities, or friendship finishes in the game that I can find. So the game is really fun, like I said, and quite honestly, the extreme violence makes it that much more enjoyable. The graphics are also very, very well done. Each character looks and moves awesome and totally rad. The backgrounds are also great with tons of stuff that's always going on. Some of the settings are incredible, like this one by the sea with a dead body flying up out of the water. You can't say that doesn't look cool. The sound is great, especially the gross sound effects. The music isn't bad at all, but honestly, it's not something that sticks with you after you power off the game. So, do I recommend this one? Hell yes. I never thought I'd enjoy a Mortal Kombat game as much as I enjoy this one. I really think that everyone should have it if you don't get grossed out by the over-the-top violence. Here's Johnny. Johnny Cage wins. Fatality. Hotline Miami is a digital-only game that came out first on PC in 2012 and most of their current home consoles and even the PS Vita back in 2013. As you can see, it's a top-down action game that looks like something from the 1980s. In fact, that's where the whole story takes place is in the late 80s. You play the role of this guy named Jacket. He got his name because of his stylish letter jacket. When you play the game, you wouldn't know what he's wearing since you can't make out any of the features on this guy. Somehow, Jacket gets involved with the Russian Mafia and starts doing hits for them. They send him a box of cookies, which isn't actually cookies, but a box with a chicken head mask and instructions to get a briefcase. Every day after you beat the first mission, Jacket gets a voicemail on his answering machine at his house. These messages are funny because they're all cryptic, but you know your ultimate goal is to go to the address that they tell you to and take everybody out. After you get your message, you just hop in your car and you automatically show up at the address. I think it would have been pretty cool to have more of an open world thing going on. One where you get in your car and actually drive through the city to your destination. But what actually happens is I guess is just fine. When you get to the address, you can see everybody inside the house walking around. Although you can't really see it, you have your chicken mask on and this is where the fun begins. Killing everybody in this building isn't as easy as you'd think. You need to sneak around a little bit and beat people up first so you can get a weapon. This could be from a baseball bat to some sort of gun. Baseball bats are great because they don't make a sound when you hit somebody with them. Once you start using a gun, this more often than not attracts attention and everyone in the building will start coming your way. I wouldn't mind using a gun the whole time, but the controls for your character are a pain to get used to. You use both analog sticks, the left one to move around and the right one for the direction you want to face. Then the shoulder buttons come into play for targeting and using your weapon. When the action gets really heavy, I usually end up facing just to the side of my enemies where my attacks miss. 
and once your enemies know you're there, they come at you with all haste and they're really good shots. It's all one hit kills and you will die a lot in this game. It even tells you towards the beginning of the game, don't be afraid of dying. This gives you the opportunity to plan your attacks better and see how your enemies are acting and see their patterns. <laughs> even then you'll die a lot. Hell, I died a ton on each mission. The good thing is that there's no loading time when you restart so you can get right back at it. After you complete missions, you'll be graded on your performance and you'll earn points. These points will let you unlock new weapons. You'll also get new masks that you can wear when you're doing missions. Each mask has different attributes that will help you out. Graphically, the game does have that 8-bit feel to it. I think it's interesting that the background is just a blank screen that slowly changes color. When you're playing the game, you don't even notice it, and I'm sure that's what the developers wanted, just to keep you focused on the action. The music is pretty strange in the game, and I like it. It kind of does remind me of the 80s with its electronic style. The game is super violent, and if you boil it down, all you're doing is killing everybody in sight on each mission, leaving trails of bodies and blood all over the place. It's actually pretty entertaining, and I had a good time playing it. I think I'll have to look into the sequel and see what it has to offer. Let's check out Postal 2. It was originally released in 2003 and I'm playing it on my Mac. It was never released on consoles. This game was banned in many easily offended countries around the world. You play as the postal dude, but he doesn't actually work for the post office. You're just a smart ass who has to run errands for his nagging wife. Each day of the week is basically its own stage, I guess, and you have different errands for each day. Hi there, would you like to sign my petition? Okay, I guess that sounds pretty good. Thanks. These are usually extremely mundane things like getting milk, returning a book to the library, and things like that. There's a late fee on this of 40 bucks. Fuck you. Honestly, you don't have to kill anyone in the game, really. But you'll see lots of other random gun battles and violence going on throughout the town all the time. Like these people protesting violent video games. Games are bad, they make you mad. Games are bad, they make you mad. Oh. We don't have to take this shit, make him pay. <laughs> or even these people who like trees so much that they think books should be banned. Save a tree, burn a book. Save a tree, burn a book. And they'll all shoot at you if you're around them just for walking by. But you can also play the game and be super violent. Don't whack me, man. I'm somebody's mama. <laughs> like breaking into people's homes and hacking them to bits. Or slicing dogs in half. Sorry, doggy. Or chasing some poor bastard all over the place as he runs for his life. The choice is yours. Lucky these things are stainless. One good example of your choices happen in the Quickie Mart place where you go to get milk. Money line forms that way, infidel. You have to wait in line and then you pay and you're on your way. But if you're super cheap and try to leave without paying, the gate comes down and good luck trying to escape. It's probably better to spend the $5. Things often happen in places you visit. You deposit your paycheck and then suddenly the bank gets robbed. You can shoot the robbers in the face or just leave, it's up to you. You also have a nearly unlimited supply of piss. You can pee on people and sometimes they'll run away and sometimes they'll vomit. But you better be careful who you piss on because you could get yourself shot. One of your errands is to get Gary Coleman's autograph at the local mall. What other video game out there lets you beat the crap out of Gary Coleman? He sure doesn't go down easily though. But if you refrain from fighting him and just get his autograph, the cops will eventually come in and beat him up for you. There's no way Gary gets out of this game unscathed. Hello, Mr. Coleman. I love facts of life. You ever do that leather Tuscadero chick? Thanks, you can leave now. I really love the postal dude's demeanor. He always sounds so pissed off and amused at the same time. I think I'll need to keep an eye out for these folks. They're definitely hazardous to my health. People walking around will freak out if they see your gun or hear your gunfire, so try to keep that thing hidden unless you really need it. Fortunately, you can collect cats in this game. Yep, cats. What good do they do? 
Well, you stick the barrel of the gun in their anus and they act as silencers for rifles and shotguns. So collect as many cats as you can. They're good for nine shots because they have nine lives and they're always fun to use. Shit. There is tons of stereotyping in this game and those who are easily offended should stay far, far away and instead focus their efforts on banning this game. We reclaim this holy land in the name of Allah. Prepare to die, infidels. The graphics use the Unreal 1 engine. Yeah, Unreal 1, what is this, the Stone Age? They generally run pretty damn smooth though, as you'd expect on a modern computer. Hey. Still, nothing here looks tremendously exciting and the same could be said for the music. There's not a whole lot of it and it's mostly just ambient sound at best. You can use standard keyboard controls as well as game pads like PS4, Xbox 360, and PS3. Though, for some reason, I couldn't get them to work. Still, clunking this aside, this is one of the most hilarious games that I've ever played, and if you've never gone through it, I definitely recommend that you do. There's even a crappy movie about this game directed by Uwe Boll. Yeah, it's violent and crude, but hey, you're mature enough to deal with that responsibly, aren't you? This game even received an official expansion pack not too long ago. Yeah, one in each hand. It's on Steam, but I don't recommend Steam for the Mac because it's wonky as hell and it interferes with everything, even when it's not running. What fucking moron designed this? It actually runs quite a bit better if you're just running Windows virtually on your Mac, download Steam there and just play it that way. Whatever, just make sure you play it. Oh my god, I'm the damn Gimp. Oh great, now my day is complete. Man, I can't go home looking like this. I better go pick up my dry cleaning. Let's see. Guess I need to go here for that. All right, there's six completely over-the-top violent games. Right, Joe? Are you okay? I... I don't know, man. No? You want me to call a doctor or something? Mm, heart's palpitating and stuff. Uh, oh, it's just the awesome violence. It's, yeah. It feels good, doesn't it? It, it actually does. Adrenaline rush for a digital game. When I get in violent moods, I want to take them out in a video game, not in real life. Yeah. And that's that's where, you know, this kind of stuff needs to stay, is mm -hmm. in the video game, in the fantasy world. Yeah. And if, you, if you're mature enough to do that, then these games are great. Yeah, they're great. It's They shouldn't leave any ideas for you to go out and, you know, want to kill five bazillion people. Yeah. And what are your some of your favorite ultra violent games that are just like yeah <laughs> yeah know? ones that we can play i mean obviously joe covered one on pc so some that you know are free or cheap super cheap would be great He's to cheap. know yeah <laughs> anyway just let us know what some of your favorite violent games are and in the meantime thank you for watching game sack